Okay. Uh, so for my presentation parts, uh, firstly, I would like to uh, discuss uh, what's ransomware. You know, we all talk about ransomware, but what's ransomware exactly is and how it will affect your business, your company business. And secondly, uh, I would like to share with you the ransomware trends reports we learned from. So they served the uh, three thousand IT leaders in different industries, different countries, and turns out that over half of them have been attacked by ransomware. It's it's really shocked. You know, ransomware is everywhere, even though we cannot feel it. And last part, I would like to just to share with you uh, about Vinci solution for ransomware prevention. And I hope you can find something in this part you are uh, you, you are looking for uh, in this part. So what's ransomware? Uh, here we have a uh, definition from Wiki. Ransomware is uh, a type of uh, malicious malware that will permanently block the access to the victim's personal data unless a ransom is paid. And let's just take a look of the uh, ransomware history. At the beginning of uh, 1989, uh, the first ransomware children course was born. And until uh, 2013, it was a crucial turning point of uh, ransomware development. The uh, crypto locker ransomware uh, emerged as the first uh, encryption ransomware to use Bitcoin as the means of uh, ransom payments. And later in 2017, a ransomware called WannaCry uh, spread more than uh, 150 countries. And since then, the ransomware has been industrialized. And also let's, let's take a look of the ransomware features. Uh, firstly, the attack methods are various like uh, advertisement, advertisements, malicious emails, uh, children ports, and uh, RDP attacks. And also the rate of uh, uh, ransomware variance is very rapid. Even we can say it's uncontrollable. So uh, why the ransomware variance uncontrollable? Uh, it is uh, because of the ransomware source code or the builder leakage. So when the ransomware source code or the builders are leaked, it becomes easier for some unskilled uh, cyber criminals, some uh, unskilled hacker to develop their own ransomware just by uh, making little uh, modification of the original code. And here we also collect some uh, typical ransomware events, recent years. Uh, I guess that uh, most of you know NVIDIA uh, since the chat GPT came out. NVIDIA is the largest supplier of uh, GPUs. And in February 2022, a hacker group, uh, Lapsus, breached NVIDIA, the stealing one terabyte of data from NVIDIA. And they threatened if uh, the NVIDIA didn't meet their demands, they will release more and more their, their data. And a few days later, uh, Ubisoft, a, a very famous game company, also uh, experienced a cybersecurity incident. They announced that they caused a temporary disruption of their uh, some of their games, systems, and services. And it turns out it's also caused by the Lapsus uh, hacker group. So we can see uh, even those uh, like leading international high-tech companies with the professional IT team, uh, they also cannot predict how serious the ransomware attack will be. And those are just the little examples. And next, uh, I want to just to share with you the ransomware re uh, trends report we learned from Sophos. So they served uh, of uh, 3000 of cybersecurity and IT leaders uh, in the global range. 
So first is the rate of uh, ransomware attacked by industries. Uh, we can learn from the graphic, the average attack rates is uh, of every industry is about uh, 65%. So it means in five companies, there were three of them have been suffered the attack once at least. And uh, let's look at the uh, popular ransomware attack type, uh, exploit vulnerability, compromised credential, malicious emails. Those are very common methods. But uh, actually, we can to do some. We can do something to prevent it, like to uh, regularly up upgrade your system to set a firewall, uh, use a strong password, and also do not open uh, unknown link in the email also to regularly do backup. So uh, after the disaster happens, how they will get data back? Uh, according to the report, over half of them uh, use backups to restore data. And some of them uh, unfortunately have to pay the ransom. And some of them uh, not only pay the ransom, but also use any other possible means to get data back. And let's uh, look into more details. The last room, some paid the ransom, but still didn't get their data back. So uh, here we can get the first conclusion is that pay the ransom is not a good idea. Uh, on the one hand, we don't know how much the hacker gonna ask us to pay. And on the other hand, we also cannot make sure if, if they will give us data back. I mean, uh, they're hacker, they are criminal. So how can we trust someone to put risk on someone uh, who wants to get benefits from us, right? And uh, regarding to the RTO, uh, only five to six percent can recover their, their data within one day, uh, no matter pay the ransom or use backups. At most up to a week, some even take more than one month. And regarding to the cost, the average cost of pay the ransom is about uh, 4 million, uh, which include both the ransom fee and also the RTO cost average cost of the uh, used backups is about 1.6 million, uh, which cost by the RTO. Uh, so from previous conclusion, we already give up the method on paying ransom. And now we can do is to use backups. But if use backups, there is a still long RTO, which will, will cost uh, the, the high, high cost. And uh, you can just consider uh, which factor will result in a long RTO and just uh, think about it. So uh, the first factor is we don't know when the system got ransomware. Uh, maybe if we are in the office, we can know it immediately with those criminals uh, those hackers, they are very clever. Uh, obviously, they won't pick up the time when you are in office. They are more active when you're when at night or uh, when you're sleeping, when you're in vacation. That time is the hacker gonna uh, put efforts to attack your system. Then just uh, imagine it. Uh, maybe one day you are in vacation, you take your family to uh, the beach, and uh, just enjoying your, your vacation, uh, drink, drink a cup of uh, cocktail. At, at the same time, your system got ransomware, but you have no idea. And this is a disaster. And uh, you can just imagine when you, when you back to the office, how your boss will react. So uh, in this case, if uh, there's a tool that can send notification to let you know, uh, when your system got ransomware, this will be helpful. We can to know it and to take appropriate measures right away.
So this is the first thing we can do, prepare in advance. And the second factor is uh, uh, we use backups. We backup every day. We have a lot of uh, backup data, but we didn't verify if the data can be recoverable. Uh, this can be the situation because sometimes there might be some errors happen when do the backup. So if uh, there's a tool that can uh, help us to regularly verify the usability of backup data, uh, when your production system got ransomware, we can just quickly find correct data for the recovery. This is the second thing we can prepare in advance. The third factor is uh, uh, if we can instantly recover the data uh, once the system got ransomware. So those are the three factors uh, we need to consider. So upon all, we can get the conclusion. Uh, if we want to use backups for ransomware prevention, the best practice is have multiple backups, no matter on primary soft site or in cloud, and make sure those backup data won't be affected. And then we regularly verify the backup data and have a notification to let us know when the system got ransomware. And if uh, unfortunately the system got ransomware, we can just instantly recover it. So based on those conclusions, let's take a look of Vinci solution. Uh, Vinci anti-ransomware backup solution is uh, mainly divided into four aspects, uh, multiple backups, kernel level, storage protection, uh, data verification, and instance recovery. First is uh, multiple backups. Vinci backup recovery provides a uh, efficient backup uh, for your business system. We support library transmission to uh, enhance the backup efficiency. Then we also support uh, offsite copy, cloud archive. You can uh, store your data at offsite or store it in cloud. So uh, in this way, we can sh make sure we have uh, multiple backups and they won't be affected. Uh, secondly, the kernel level storage protection. This is a uh, built-in feature inside DaVinci to prevent your backup storage against ransomware and uh, malware. Thirdly is uh, data verification. Uh, Vinci supports to regularly verify the backup data can be recoverable and send notification to your email address to let you know if the VM is uh, uh, normal running or if it's got ransomware or it has some error. And lastly, Vinci supports instance recovery feature to quickly restore your business system uh, with, uh, within minutes. So first, uh, keep multiple backups with the Vinci solution, you can to do uh, on-premise backup, save your backup data at different storage, uh, no matter on-premise or keep at offsite or in cloud. The next is uh, storage protection to protect your backup data against the ransomware. And just let me introduce the core principle of it. So the, this diagram shows a common architecture of the Linux kernel layer and hardware layer. Uh, Vinci injects its anti-ransomware process into the kernel layer of the system. It monitors the uh, IO operation in real time, uh, allow the access for authorized process and other uh, Ransomware, malware, and unauthorized access will be all blocked. 
So uh, this can ensure the security of the backup data when ransomware or malicious software attempt to modify the backup data, the access will be uh, directly denied. This can provide an additional layer of the, to protect your backup data. And next is uh, data verification uh, to testify the availability of your backup data. So now we have uh, multiple backup data you can just do uh, set up a verification job, regularly verify if the backup data can be recoverable and send reports to your email address. And with this report, you can check uh, whether the data is good for use, there's no virus, no damage, and we can guarantee it's always ready for recovery. The last important feature is instant, re instant restore. If unfortunately uh, the business system got ransomware, we can use the instant restore to qu quickly resume business. The RTO will less than one minute. This can largely reduce the, the cost results by long RTO. So uh, basically this is the how Winching can help you to prevent ransomware. Uh, firstly, we have uh, multiple backups and we have uh, multiple backups in different location and we make sure your backup uh, storage won't be affected. And then we just uh, regularly verify the usability of uh, backup data, send notification to, you, to your email uh, and let you know once the system got ransomware. And uh, if uh, got ransomware, we can just uh, use the instance re recovery to quickly recover the data. And last page, let's look, in, look into the winching ransomware solution advantage. Uh, firstly, our solution is a built-in solution. There's no uh, third party involved in and no dedicated storage needed for that like, uh, or object storage needed for that. And also uh, there's no additional components for that. From the cost perspective, you can to cut down the extra storage device cost. And from the operation and management perspective, because uh, there's no third party and extra compo components needed, you can also to reduce your operation and management work. It's uh, uh, obviously a cost effective and easy to use solution, just as our uh, today's webinars uh, uh, copy uh, says so. Okay, so I think that's uh, all for my presentation part. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Jack. Uh, wait for a moment, uh, and uh, I will now share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? This is the Winching homepage. Okay, firstly, I'd like to tell you what I'm going to live demo. I will... <laughs> I will divide the, the ransom protection into two parts. One is before being attacked by the ransomware and how to back up, how to protect your backup data. After that, it's about when you are attacked by the ransomware, how do you recover your data or how do you quickly recover your data? Okay, I have prepared uh, a server. You can see this server. And uh, another, uh, I have prepared NAS as a destination, a recovery destination. Firstly, let's talk about, uh, uh, firstly, let's talk about uh, this server. This is a Windows server. And uh, you can see, actually, I have I have added uh, some 
uh, some files, some testing files. Also, you can see some working files. For example, like uh, Excel, um, Word, uh, TXT file, and uh, so on. Also, I have added uh, uh, ransomware here. After that, uh, I will simulate this situation. Firstly, before being attacked uh, by the ransomware, how we protect? Uh, firstly, we can protect uh, by the level of file or by our level of virtual machine. Firstly, I will show you about uh, protect uh, your virtual machine. Firstly, go to the virtual infrastructure and the uh, virtual platform and uh, click on the end. Here, the virtual machine resides on the VMware. So you choose uh, the VMware and uh, input uh, the IP address of uh, VMware vCenter or Excite server and also the credential of administrator. You don't need to install any agent uh, on the target virtual machine, just connect uh, to the hypervisor, that's all. After that, uh, you need to back, uh, you need to license uh, this uh, host. You can say we have four hosts, uh, you can license all. You can only back up the virtual machines uh, that reside on the hosts you licensed. But uh, for the restore, there is no limit. Okay, after you licensed uh, and uh, you end the virtual platform, you can back up this virtual machine. Let's create uh, a virtual machine backup job. Four step wizards. First step is to choose the virtual machine you want to back up. Here I can back, I will back up this server. Actually, you can back up a lot of servers in one job. And uh, for each virtual machine, you can exclude uh, some disks uh, from backing up. Just uh, click on this button. The second step is to choose uh, who will process this job. You can choose the winching server or winching node. The winching node is designed uh, to scale out uh, the backup capabilities. And also to choose a backup storage, you can choose local disk, uh, SCAS. Here I will choose this. The third step is important uh, to choose the backup strategies. At the general strategy tab, you can choose how to backup. We support once off, just backup once, or backup as scheduled. You can choose full backup, incremental backup, differential backup, or favorable incremental backup. For every incremental backup is to take a full backup at the beginning and all the rest take incremental backups. For full backup, you can choose frequency like daily, weekly, or monthly, and other frequencies. You can also choose to backup several days in a single week. For incremental backup, we recommend to enable daily. If you want to take several incremental backup at a single day, enable repeat. From the start time to end time, at every repeat interval, you can back up again. <laughs> For speed controller, you can optionally enable to limit the backup speed if you don't want the backup uh, process to interfere with your business production. For data storage policy, we recommend to enable data deduplication and data compression to reduce the data size. If you, you don't want your backup data uh, being leak leakaged by the others, you can enable the data encryption. We use AES-256 back level encryption. Random password means uh, winching generated uh, password, or you can enable your own customized uh, password. For retention policy, we support long-term, uh, short-term retention policy to keep your backup point by number of restore points or by number of days at a customized value. Also, we support uh, long-term. You can keep your full backup point uh, by week, by month, or by year. You can take a long time. At advanced strategy, you can choose how to take snapshot. For serial means take snapshot one by one. Parallel means take snapshot for all the virtual machines at the same time. 
for one virtual machine job, that is the same. Also, you can choose a pre-create snapshot. It's alongside with the serial means before taking that, uh, before the last virtual machine data transmission done, it will take snapshot for the next virtual machine. You can increase the transfer rate to accelerate this job. And for bit detector, it's valid for NTFS file system to exclude the swap files on partition space from backup, also reduce the data size. <clears throat> At the transmission strategy time, <clears throat> you can choose some rich, uh, some normal mass, mass transmission method like a LAN, encrypted LAN, or SAM. Uh, for SAM, if we, your machine server is a physical server and have collected with same SAM storage, storage, you can use this. And for hot end, if you have, your virtual server is installed as a virtual machine directly on the VMware, you can directly use hot end. Otherwise, like what I, uh, like this virtual, this virtual server is a Felix server, you need to use a backup proxy. At advanced strategy, you can choose a block size, a quest, a snapshot, a CBT for efficient, fast incremental backup and the fake CBT, if anything wrong to the CBT. Okay, the last step is review and confirm. You can change the job name for better identify and uh, submit this job. You will be redirected uh, to the job page. At this page, uh, you can Find your job. It has been scheduled, so time is not due, so you can manually start this. You can also click on the job name to go to job details page. You will see all the details like summary, storage, strategy, and uh, advanced strategies. Here you can see run log, virtual machine list, history jobs. Okay. It will take maybe five minutes because it has about uh, 15 GB. And uh, let's go back to this uh, this virtual machine. And uh, we will back up at a file level. It's agent based. So I will <coughs> install this, uh, uh, reinstall this agent. Just to click next. And uh, uh, select uh, collection mode is uh, agent to server that is uh, recommended. That if you your server don't have a static IP, you 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 can choose this mode. Okay, input the IP address of winching server. Directly click OK and uh, next install. Plus, uh, actually, I tested, uh, I installed the agent, so I have to reinstall and uh, install this. Okay, normally when we go back to the resources and the uh, agents page, you will find this server. So for agent uh, installation, you have two options. One is download mainly import to the target server and the mainly install. Another is remote push. Here, auto deploy. Input uh, the, the IP address of the target server and also the credential of administrator. Here, this is for single server. Also, you can use the template, download the template, which is an Excel file and uh, Actually, it's the same as a single input all the IP addresses and the credentials. Okay, you can see this server has been added and you need to license it for the file level and click on license. You will see this icon means it can be 
backed up at the file level. Okay, let's create a physical backup job, file backup. A similar four steps with the virtual machine backup, so I will not tell you all the details. Backup all these files on the disk E. And you can use some advanced strategy, the filter. You have two filter. One is exclusion. Exclusion means to exclude the rules. So some files of this will not be backed up. The in include means you just back up the files with the rule, which all these files which meet the rule will be backed up. You can use the exact match or you can use the white card match. Like this. Because I will use, uh, I will back up all the files so I don't need this. Second step, same as a virtual machine backup. Third step, also very similar full backup, incremental backup, and uh, data compression, data encryption, tension policy, transmission. You can enable encrypted transfer. We use TLS 1.3. And the uh, snapshot, this snapshot uh, is different from the snapshot provided by, uh, by the hypervisor that is the uh, which is self-developed based on the, on the support of Windows VSS and based on the Linux copy and write technology. We also use the volume filter to detect uh, the incremental. Okay, change your job name to better identify and submit. Also, we start for. You can see this job almost done and you can find this backup data here. Find out, find out this job name. So this job name and uh, sorry, this you can find that. I think uh, another job also finished because uh, it just uh, little files. Okay, this is to back up your your data at the virtual machine level and also at the file level. Then how to prevent your backup data unmodified or deleted? Let's talk about the storage protection. At here, system settings and storage settings, you can see I have enabled the storage protection. And this is valid for the SAN and DAS. Here I use the local disk, which is DAS as a backup storage, so we can use this feature. Let's, let's go to the Winchi server back at the with built-in SSH tool. Okay, uh, I used to log in, so I didn't use a password. So you can see you can see this uh, directory, that is a local disk. And uh, let's go to it. Okay, you can see this directory stores all the backup data, like database, uh, file, NAS, uh, OS, uh, virtual machine. I'm now on logging on the identity of root. Uh, so even the, so maybe some intruders uh, Get get the the root uh, the highest uh, privilege uh, somehow. I'm trying to make a directory. It's not permitted. I'm trying to <clears throat> remove all the files. Also permit also not permitted. So this feature prevent you from the ransomware as well as accidental or malicious deletion. So this is one feature. This feature is valid for all your backup data, 
virtual machine backup data, NAS backup data, file backup, server backup, and uh, also database backup. And then let's talk about uh, uh, backup verification. Imagine a situation that uh, a virus that uh, encrypted or deleted uh, some critical files, uh, you cannot uh, reboot to your server, you cannot uh, boot your server after your next uh, reboot. It happens, but uh, you if you don't reboot, uh, all things uh, normal. So maybe some uh, some previous backup data is already corrupted, but you don't know. So we have a backup verification to truly recover your previous backup data and uh, to find out if it can really be recoverable. So that is the principle of verification. Firstly, you need to create a verification lab. It's very simple. You just need to input uh, some IP address, uh, some uh, mask, and uh, click on auto. And uh, then Winching will create uh, an isolated network for you automatically. You can say I have already deployed the tool. You can say what it is like. Then we go to the WinWare and uh, go to this verification folder. And uh, you can see this is actually a little virtual machine which consumes little resources. One GB CPU, one GB memory, and uh, two GB hard disk. And uh, normally it's uh, powered off only when the there is a job, it will hover on automatically. So let's create a verification job. It's a simple tool for step wizards. You can choose how to the method. One is manual, another is automatic. That's what we recommend. Okay, verify by job. Also recommend, because if you rec recommend by virtual machine, that is a once off job you verify by job, then every backup point generated by this job, once a week, a full everyday incremental will also will all be verified. So that is what we recommend. And click on this, and you can see the verified virtual machine uh, configuration. Like a CPU sockets, uh, you can set the same as the original, or you can change it. At the advanced strategy, you can see how we verify. We verify by ping, by heartbeat, and also by screenshot. And the verification time, you can increase or decrease. That depends on the server performance. Next, and select a verification lab. You can see it will be performed at the isolated network. Third step, you can choose uh, when to verify. I prefer daily and advanced strategy. Which server will process this job and uh, enable this, you will get a report. Click on next and uh, submit this job. <coughs> Okay, you can manually start this job unless it will start uh, due to its schedule. We can go back to the WinWare and uh, you will find uh, this, uh, this, uh, this lab. See, it's powered on automatically and uh, then it will use instant virtual machine technology to mount uh, the backup data and also to test if it is recoverable. See, it has been created. That why I say it's an instant restore job because the, the backup storage is NFS. Okay, it will take a little longer time. So I prepared two verification jobs. One is for Windows, another is for Linux. It's three jobs and the verification report. You can see it has passed through the ping, 
the heartbeat and the screenshot. And uh, you can see this. Normally at this login page, you can 100% sure that uh, your backup data is really recoverable. You can download the report uh, or sent by email. If you pre-configured, uh, this uh, report can be automatically sent to your email box. This is uh, Linux, almost same as uh, Windows. Okay. <clears throat> I talked about uh, how to prevent uh, your data at the virtual machine level and the file level, and uh, talk about uh, prevent uh, your backup data from accidental deletion or ransomware, and uh, to check if your backup data is recoverable for virtual machine. And uh, that's all. Let's talk about uh, the simulation of real ransomware here. You can see, I have, uh, I have uh, downloaded uh, and uh, uploaded this uh, server to the to the target server. But uh, I have to be very carefully. Firstly, I will stop this uh, network. I disable the adapter, and uh, there is no network. Okay, I will extract, uh, decompress this. Okay, I will change the name uh, to the exe, so exact. It, it, uh, it can be executed. Okay, this is a dangerous uh, operation. Now it's on the process of uh, encryption. Uh, you can see this Google cannot be click on. I just click on and nothing happens. You can see some files has been encrypted. So it will be, I don't know actually, when it will encrypt uh, these files, uh, just uh, some random pass. But uh, you can see at least uh, this has been encrypted. You cannot uh, open it. Actually, this is a uh, very dangerous. So I will not wait. Uh, I will close this uh, uh, ransomware. And uh, wait for a moment until at least one will be encrypted. Uh, not yet. Okay, this. Not yet. Okay, I will not wait. Uh, you can see this is a real uh, ransomware, just uh, for some reason. Didn't, uh, but you can see at least uh, this is is being encrypted. You cannot open it. Okay, uh, I will delete uh, this dangerous uh, uh, virtual machine. Okay, <clears throat> then we can recover the whole virtual machine or recover the files uh, from the backup data you just created. For, you have three options. One is uh, full restore. It will take a little longer time, which I will not show you. I will show you the instant restore. Uh, similar steps. Uh, firstly, choose this uh, this backup point and the second uh, choose a target host
It will wait for a moment because it's requesting resources from the target host. Okay, I will not change them and power on after restore. You can configure the instant restore virtual machine like a CPU and the RAM. Also virtual disk, two disk and uh, at advanced strategy, you can change some settings. Interface, same as the network. If you don't know which one, you can choose the virtual machine network. And uh, you can change the MAC address. Other settings. If you encrypt this backup point, you need to de-encrypt at other settings. And uh, click on OK. For instant restore job, you need to manually start. You can see it's connecting to vCenter and uh, it's mounting NFS directly the backup data to the new generated virtual machine. You can go back to this. You can go back to uh, the winching server. Oh, no, sorry, the one more. Okay, it's creating the this virtual machine and the power on. Okay, you, actually you can see it's uh, almost uh, 40 seconds, uh, this job done. And uh, the rest is uh, powering on the instant virtual machine. Actually, it's uh, irrelevant to the winching, it only depends on the performance of the host and also this virtual machine, the resources allocated. Okay, let's open the web console. It seems it will take some time to power it on. Okay, in this time, we will um, directly use another method uh, to do the file level restore. Similar steps. Uh, find uh, the job name. Mm, I think it. Here. And uh, you can see all the files. Choose all. Actually, if you don't want to restore some files, you can you can click on this. And uh, where to restore? You can restore to another server, or you can restore to the last share. That is uh, what I will choose. Restore to this, and uh, I will create a new server, like a uh, new, new directory, like. Uh, Recovery destination. And uh, click on next. Some strategies uh, like speed controller, like the master strategy, increase transfer rate, accelerate this job. And click on next. And uh, submit. Normally, this job will be fast. And uh, let me open my last share, which has been mounted uh, to my laptop. Here, destination. You can see all the files has been restored uh, successfully and uh, you can open it. Uh, so, it's, uh, it's intact. Okay, let's go back to the uh, this instant virtual machine. Okay, uh, console. And uh, <clears throat> let's log in.
So let's open the disk E and find if we can access our, <clears throat> our working files. Mm, nothing wrong, you can see. So the instant restore allows you to quickly access your files or your virtual machine within, I think, less than three minutes, including the time of powering on this server. If you restore, if you use full restore, maybe a TB level virtual machine, it takes you maybe several hours, but uh, for the instant restore, same, just uh, several minutes. And uh, <coughs> you can check about this virtual machine. You can see this instant virtual machine and the storage is NFS, see? And uh, all the new generated data will, will be uh, changed. So for now, if you don't, if you don't want uh, to still use this virtual machine, you can just copy all these files to another server. If you want to use this, this server, and uh, you can still, you can generate new data. Okay, maybe uh, new data maybe <laughs> generated. And uh, you can use the uh, WinChain live migration. and the restore to us. Okay, wait for a moment and uh, click on okay. And it will start running. And uh, firstly, it will transfer the backup data, the original backup data. After that, uh, it will transfer the new generated data. This new uh, file will be generated. See, it's rebuilding. The yeah, new virtual machine will be um, created. Its name is um, Plus Migration. And uh, when the data transmission done, this will be powered on and this will be powered off automatically. So that is uh, all about uh, my live demo. So let's get a summary. Before your data being attacked by the a ransomware, you can back up uh, at the virtual machine level or at a file level. And uh, you can use the uh, storage protection to protect your backup data, unmodified or undeleted. And uh, you can check if your backup data is recoverable, you can use uh, the virtual machine verification. After being attacked by the ransomware, you can use full restore or instant restore to quick to instant restore to quickly access your files or your servers. And also you can use the file level recovery to restore to another server or to a NAS device. So that's all about uh, my live demo part.